Hello everyone, welcome to the Charles Norman Show. How are you guys doing? Um, today, well, let me first tell you why I have these glasses on. I have, well, the last couple of days I haven't gotten that much sleep because I've been writing a lot of papers and doing a lot of schoolwork. So I don't have to do it next week during break. So I haven't been getting any sleep in my eyes. Big bags under them. And red, red, red eyes because I'm really tired. A lot, like, not really tired, but I'm tired enough. I need to get some sleep. I don't want to be on camera with big bags on my, under my eyes and red, red eyes. Um, Today we have no script, and we're going to do the normal things, talk about some sports. Eagles versus Titans. That's a game that I'm a little bit excited about, just to see how the Eagles mail back, even though this is a team that should be easily. Um, we got some hot topics. President Obama is in the news. The House Republicans, Bill Cosby, scandal. Oh, we're going to talk about scandal. Um, and then our inspiration from Monday, which was inspired by Bill Cosby. I gave you all a weekly assignment, but that weekly assignment wasn't good enough, so I give you, I'm going to give you another weekly assignment. That is actually not coming from me. It's coming from Ms. McCaffrey. She gave me a good one that I should have used in the first place because it's really good. All right, now it's time for the show, y'all. Let's start it. Here we go. All right, sports. Like always, first is sports. Um, talk about the Eagles' keys to victory. I don't want to be negative, but the tight last week the Eagles played a team who was ranked 30 against the run, and they came out and passed more than they ran. And I just think that was crazy. And I hope, you know, the Titans just came off a loss to Pittsburgh where Le'Veon Bell went crazy on them. He had an amazing rushing day. And I just hope the Eagles, Chip Kelly, and who's our offensive coordinator? I forgot his name. He doesn't even call the plays, but um, Pat Sherman. Chip Kelly and Pat Sherman, I hope they get together and I hope they game plan. To focus heavily on the run this game. I'll be more balanced and not pass it so much. We can't let Mark Sanchez pass the ball over 35 times. He passed, I think, 40-something times last week. And that's just not going to work. It's not. Last week, the turnovers by Mark Sanchez shouldn't have happened. But they did. And we're going to have to move on from that. It was last week. We played, first of all, I'm not surprised what happened last week. We played a very good team in the Green Bay Packers. That's why I really didn't get that mad because, yeah, I picked the Eagles to win, but I really didn't expect them to win. Not against Green Bay and Aaron Rodgers. I mean, that defense, our defense, the Philadelphia Eagles defense, looked so bad last week. He just exposed each and every part. Like when we had Jordy Nelson covered, Randall Cobb would be open. And Brandon Boykin, who's usually really good. He's really, I thought he was one of the best slot corners in the league, honestly. But he just didn't do his job how he should have last week. And they got torched. Aaron Rodgers was laughing at the defense when he came up to the line and hiked the ball for four plays last week. I mean, that's just unacceptable by the defense. And Billy Davis didn't blitz enough. The Eagles did do what I wanted them to do. And that was keep Aaron Rodgers in the pocket for the most part. But I also said, you have to get some pressure on him. Make him force some throws, even though he probably won it. But they didn't let him run outside, and he still got us. So that just goes to show you how good of a quarterback Aaron Rodgers is and how we shouldn't really. I'm not going to use the Eagles haven't beaten a good team yet this year. Well, they beat the Colts. But I'm not going to use the Packers as a measuring stick because they were on fire, and I didn't see any team going into Lambeau Field last week beating the Green Bay Packers, not even the Patriots, nor the Cardinals, who I think are the top two teams in the league. And the Packers are the second best team in the NFC behind the Cardinals. Um, yeah, we had to run the ball. I'm, I'm hoping that Chip doesn't go out there and pass, 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 pass. We got to run the ball. We got to get Shady back up and running. This is the same guy who led the league in rushing last year. And I think, remember, about 10, 15 shows ago, I showed you all a video. I mean, I had my drawing board out, and I showed you all the averages between the Eagles running this year and last year. And their average for the run pass is 44 pass a game this year and 26 runs. And last year it was 34 runs and 30 passes. And that's why the Eagles were so good. That was a part of the reason why Nick Foles 
went 27-2 and because he had the running game to help him out. And, yeah, the running game doesn't get started quick enough like we wanted to, but I don't think Chip calls enough run plays in the beginning for it to get started. I mean, you got to establish what you want in the beginning, and then it'll work. If you don't establish what you want in the beginning, you won't be able to establish it later on in the game. So, defensively, oh, first off, I'm a little worried about Tennessee because Ray Horton is a great defensive coordinator, and he sent some group on oh, on Monday. He was sending some great blitzes. I think they sacked them Big Ben like five times on Monday. And I know our our offensive line is better than Pittsburgh's, but goodness, this could be bad. If this O line, if Max Tobin or Matt Tobin can't get his stuff together, I'm I'm guaranteeing that Ray, Ray Horton will attack Matt Tobin. That left side of the line, right side of the line, Matt Tobin and Lane Johnson. That's going to be hurtful. And one thing I would like to see the Eagles do is get the tight ends involved more. Our tight ends have not been involved as much as they should be. They weren't in, they weren't as involved as they were last year or even to the beginning point of the season. I'm, I was expecting Zach Ertz to have a breakout year, but I don't think he's living up to expectations at this point, and it's not his fault. I'm blaming it on play calling. Um, defensively, we got to be aggressive. We got bust in the mouth last week, like completely bust in the mouth. Green Bay and Rodgers ran that ball. Well, not even ran past that ball all over us. Bradley Fletcher, last week is last week. This week is this week. You get a, you get to refresh. It's a new week. Aaron Rodgers won't be on the field. You're playing a rookie quarterback. Take advantage of this. Get your confidence back up. I believe in you right now. Just because we don't have anybody else, honestly. But just do what you have to do. Don't give up the big play. Pay attention. Safeties, don't let anything behind you. Nate Allen, I don't know how many times I'm going to tell you, don't let things behind you. Be balanced and be aggressive and be roll in this game. We need this win. Um, the Cardinals-Seahawks game, the Cardinals are the number one team record-wise in the National Football League, and they're going up to the 12th man in Seattle. Um, I see this being a good defensive game. I mean, both the Cardinals and the uh, Seahawks have very good defenses. I believe, you know, let's just think. Let me just stop and say this. The Cardinals are such a good football team because of Bruce Arias. I mean, he's the best coach in the league, and I hope he wins coach of the year this year. I mean, he has this team prepared. They, lo they lose their starter, their leader. When most teams do this, they you the whole team gets a little shaky. The whole offense will get shaky when they lose their quarterback. Not the Cardinals. Mm-mm. Their leader went down, they brought in another guy, and then the rest of the guys around that replacement stepped up and did their jobs even better than they were doing it before to make sure that he was comfortable. And I think that's amazing. And I hope I hope that the Cardinals continue to win. It's nice to see them win, even though I'm not a Cardinals fan. Cowboys Giants game. I'm not even gonna talk about this. I was going to, but I know the Cowboys are gonna beat the Giants on Sunday night football. I want the Cowboys to beat the Giants on Sunday night football so that when the Eagles play the Cowboys on Thanksgiving, there will be two eight and three teams fighting for first place of the NFC East. That'll make it that'll make the game totally better. I'm not gonna talk I'm saying anything else about that game because I have three shows next week. Well, I wasn't supposed to tell you that right there. Bills Jets game. Um, the Bills Buffalo. Okay, so I'm near Buffalo. I'm about two and a half hours away from Buffalo where I am right now. And the Bills, I mean Buffalo was hit with like somewhere between five and eight feet of snow. And I got a picture of Buffalo Bills Stadium for you guys. They were offering people ten dollars an hour to work around the clock to shovel it out, to clean it up in time for Sunday's game. But it was it didn't happen. So the NFL moved the game and two. To Monday, and people, to Monday in Detroit, and people who go to the game, well, anybody can go to the game because it's free. Detroit Lions have put on their website that anybody who wants to come to the game, come down. The tickets are free to the public. So make sure you guys, if you're out there, you don't even have to be a fan. Just go. Go see Ford Field. It's a nice stadium. Um, all right. I want to get my picks this week. I have Cleveland over Atlanta, Tampa. Chicago over Tampa Bay, Houston over Cincinnati, Indianapolis over Jacksonville, Green Bay over Minnesota, New England over Detroit, 
Philadelphia over Tennessee. You guys noticed that I picked the Eagles to win every single week. St. Louis over San Diego. Arizona over Seattle. I didn't know I picked them. Denver over Miami. San Francisco over Washington. And Dallas over New York football giants. All right, that's enough for sports. Let's move on to hot topics. Um, so Barack Obama, president, I should not have called him Barack Obama, president Barack Obama gave a speech last night on immigration and in the speech he's basically said, he basically said he's going to try to shield five, about five million undocumented people from being deported and he's going to give them all, no not all, but some of them work, working permits. Well, the House Republicans do not like this. And they're going to try to fight it. But the thing is, right now, they don't have a plan to fight it. So they're going to go into it, head turn that way, and body face that way. Go straight forward like that, like they always do. And that's why this country is how it is, because they don't think. And, again, on the House Republicans, they have they are suing over the Affordable Care Act, which is called, well, what people call Obamacare, but the real name for it is the Affordable Care Act. And they're suing on them because the president acted without congressional authority. Boo hoo. I mean this stuff this health care affordable care act should be helping people, but it won't because we'll never see what it's supposed to be about if these people don't the Republicans and Democrats don't work together to let this um of Obamacare work for everyone. Um guess what? They are going to make a real life Barbie doll. And when I say real life Barbie doll, I mean not a Barbie doll that's just perfect. They're going to have, she's going to be shorter. She's going to be the size of an average person. They're going to have add-ons where you can put on pimples, zits and stuff on her face, and stretch marks going to be on her legs and on her stomach, actually, and cellulite on her legs. I have pictures of it. Look at that. I mean, I guess that's good for kids. So, Little girls, so now they all, now they can see that that they, now they can see that they don't have to look like Barbie, which is pretty cool. I like that. And all right, let's talk about Bill Cosby. Um, a lot of allegations still coming out, so I just wanna I couldn't wait anymore to tell, get my feelings on it. Well, not my feelings, but what I thought about. You know, I think it's really sad. Um, it's Bill, and I like Bill Cosby. I always say the Cosby Show is one of my favorite shows. So, and looking at his character on Cosby Show, you just would never think that he would do something like this, or the way that Bill Cosby goes around talking and scolding people, saying how we need to do better. You would just never think that he would do something like this. But it's possible that it's happening. I mean, at this point, 15 or 16 women have accused him. So. I hope he didn't do it because I really like Bill Cosby. But if he did, it would be really sad. And if he didn't, it's still really sad that anyone would accuse. I mean, you got to be a sick person to rape somebody. But for you to accuse somebody of, rape you, of raping you, you got to be even sicker than the person who does it. Because that's just... But I'm not going to say these women are lying because I don't know. I wasn't there. And that would be rude, ignorant, classless of me to say that they're lying. But I do like Bill Cosby. And... You know, he's losing. I mean, well, he's doing, he's actually done some stand up gigs, and people are giving him, like, standing ovations because they're happy to see him and happy to see that he's talking still. So, but TV Land has vowed not to show the Cosby Show anymore, and NBC pulled his upcoming sitcom, and Netflix pulled their upcoming special of featuring Bill Cosby. So, I mean,. He's 77, he's had his career, but if he, and I think he should lose it if he does, um, if he is guilty, because this is wrong. Alright, let's talk about that scandal finale. Okay, two things. When Olivia, when Olivia, when Papa Pope, Eli, or Rowan, was sitting in that house and he was talking to Olivia, and he put the gun down on the table, I said to my friend right away, there's no bullets in that gun, and she's going to pick it up and try to shoot him. I said it to him. I promise you all, I said it to him. And then when she picked up the gun and tried to shoot her, I said, it's a test It's a test of loyalty. Like, would she really try to kill her dad? And she pulled the trigger. 
I mean, I felt he, the guy never showed any emotion. He was hurt by this. So, you know, this was something really hurtful. And I felt bad for Papa Pope because that's my boy. I'm sorry. I like him a lot. He's my favorite character on the show. And then the last part of the episode where she's dancing with Jake. And Jake goes in the room to get the pillow. And she's gone. I bet you Jake thinks her dad did it. But the vice president had something to do with it. Or what if the vice president and Rowan are working together? Gotta wait till January 29th to see. Um, sad news, the Queen Latifah show has been canceled. Um, I thought it was a very good talk show. I enjoyed watching it every day at 3 o'clock. But it was, it cost too much and the ratings were where the network wanted it to be. So they canceled it. But Queen Latifah left, left this great message which ties into our inspiration. Um, the most important thing in life is that you wake up in, every single day and take chances, no matter what the outcome is. Believe in yourself and continue to fly. And that's going to lead us to inspiration today because that's what basically Bill Cosby was saying. Here's our inspiration again. inspiration again recapping what Bill Cosby said in order to succeed your desire for success should be greater than your fear of failure and I got a question why not fear of failure I mean why should you fear failure how about you sit there and you f have a big fear of failing and everything you do and let failure hold you back failure is a roadblock it can be a roadblock, but it could be also a, it could also be a stepping stone. And I think I like to tend to use failure as a stepping stone because it'll help you. Really, you can learn, go back and learn, Re revisit what you did wrong. Use that next time when you so you don't make the same mistakes. Learn from your mistakes. Learn from the experience because you get everything out of the experience, even if it's failure, even if experience ends in failure you still get something out of it because it's a lesson really and just like what Queen Latifah said again I'm going to repeat it said the most important thing in life is that you wake up every single day and take chances no matter what the outcome believe in yourself and continue to fly continue to take chances take chances don't worry about failing let failing be at the back of your mind because it's going to happen you're not going to okay Honestly, I don't think anybody was successful the very first time they tried to do anything. I mean, you got Bill Gates, um, Mark Zuckerberg, look at people like Oprah, all these billionaires, Steve Jobs, they all failed. Michael Jordan, greatest basketball player of all time to some people, failed, didn't even make his high school basketball team, some crap like that. So, it's okay to fail, just learn from it. So, have everybody been living up to the weekly assignment, which was to look back at your failure, because it's going to help you succeed? Um, I have. I've been looking back through the shows. I'm looking at what I could do better and what I am doing well and what I could do better and what I have improved on from what I didn't do well. So, I like it. And here's our revised copy. Not copy. Our revised new weekly assignment that you can use next week along with next week's weekly assignment and that is never settle for less than your best try possibly fail and improve it's most that's amazing came from Miss McCafferty she's a genius I love that um try possibly fail and improve it's a process follow the process keep on going like Queen Latifah says continue to fly you will be okay all right that's our show for today, everybody. Um, thank you, everybody, for watching. Please continue to view and share this show. It really means a lot. I love to talk to you all. It was Friday. I'm tired. Next week, this look at the set. We will not be here next week. I am going back to Philly, so we're going to take the show on the road. We'll be in Philly in a different setting, um, possibly. Now, I am actually going to have three shows next week, Monday, which is always the recap of the weekend show. And I'm going to have Wednesday since the Eagles play the Cowboys on Thursday night football. Not that, why I keep saying Thursday night? On Thanksgiving football, I'm going to have a show on Wednesday to talk about the three games of Thanksgiving, mainly the Eagles game and then Friday, our normal show, to recap Thursday and then talk about the weekend. 
Okay. Well, that's our show for today. See you later, everybody.